So where exactly should you live in New Braunfels, Texas? I can help. If you would kindly stick around to the end of this video, I'll share some footage I happened to catch of an immovable object and a not so unstoppable force. It was a beautiful day in New Braunfels yesterday. I was with my beautiful wife, Suzanne, and we talked about this very thing. If you were thinking about moving here, what are the advantages of living not only just north, south, east, or west, we, we divided the area up into regions. And what are the benefits of each one? Here's what we came up with. Okay, everybody, we're on the Faust Street Bridge. It overlooks the Guadalupe River, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But right now, I wanted to introduce my wife, Suzanne. Hi, how are you? Suzanne and I go back 40, 40 years or so. We've been married a couple of different times. <laughs> um, during one of the times that we were not married, Suzanne boogied. She left Houston and came up here. Houston has just got too much concrete for me. I had to get out of there. And I moved here to New Braunfels because I had gone here many times as a child with my family for vacations. Why wouldn't you live in your vacation land? So that's exactly what I did. And I have never been happier. Well, I love that. And uh, of course, I followed her up here and uh, I've discovered myself how amazing this place is. And uh, we thought it'd be very helpful for anybody thinking about moving to New Braunfels to find out where exactly you wanted to live. So we divided the surrounding area up into eight regions and we'll start right here in the center of town, the city center, Loop 337 to the north and I-35 to the south. And uh, the Faust Street Bridge is located here. This is a uh, this is a historic bridge. It was built in 1887. It's part of the old San Antonio Road. They used to call it the Camino Real. Uh, damaged in the 1970s. Uh, so they've since then closed it off to cars and it's only walking traffic now. So you can come up here, you can ride your bike, sit on the benches and, um, and uh, just enjoy a little peace and tranquility. What else about the center of town, the city center, do you like, Suzanne? Well, one of the things that's so unique about New Braunfels is that although it's growing, it still is a small town at heart. And that center of New Braunfels downtown captures that perfectly. It's a circle. You go around a circle and then off into the different streets. The, count, the county courthouse is right there. Lots of really neat bars and shops are around there. They have festivals downtown. They block off streets around the circle so that you can walk freely and safely with your family. I didn't cut her off, I promise. We'll get back to Suzanne and the bridge in just a minute, but I want to talk about some of these neighborhoods. As you would expect in the center of town, you'll find more established communities with most homes built between the 1940s through the 1980s. Tall trees, mature foliage, the occasional deer. Okay, more, more than the occasional. Although there are some pockets of more recent homes built in the last 10 years and a few brand new neighborhoods with construction wrapping up on some final opportunities. Prices are all over the place in the city center, from the low 100s to well over a million dollars, depending on lot size, view. And also you have both the Comal and the Guadalupe rivers flowing through town, so there are a number of riverfront properties. Um, if you head just a little bit east, the Green District, G-R-U-E-N-E, -E, the Green Historic District. You've got uh, Loop 337 to the west and Highway 306 to the east. And I understand that the Green family uh, moved to New Braunfels in the mid-1840s and uh, bought a bunch of land around the, Rio, uh, the uh, Guadalupe River, planted cotton and thrived. And a lot of their family homes and some of the businesses that sprang up in the area are now souvenir shops and uh, bed and breakfasts and that kind of thing. Great restaurants. And of course, don't forget, Green Hall. Green Hall, that's right. A lot of the locals uh, will drive their golf carts around. It's just that, it's that kind of a community. What else about the Green District stands out for you? Well, of course, every tourist knows about Green, Texas. Everyone comes there. But during the week, when the tourists are not here, you get that to yourself. In, in New Braunfels, Texas, you own Green, Texas. And you get to walk around and enjoy the souvenir shops, the, 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 the cold beer, the, the delicious local wines, and some local music for free during the week. The old uh, cotton mill is now the grist mill restaurant. And so that's a great place, lots of decks and uh, good food. 
Ah, the music is back. Must be time to talk about homes again. The neighborhoods in green are varied. You'll find that homes built in the 1950s to the 1970s are well maintained and highly sought after. But there's a lot of new construction. The area is so small, it's interesting that they're still finding places to build. Some longtime landowners have sold and developers are meeting the demand with mid-sized homes that are competitively priced for the area. Most of the 1,800 to 2,500 square foot single family homes in these subdivisions sell for between 400 and 600 K. For a little less, there are some garden home communities that might be perfect for retirees. They're sort of neo-craftsman style with front porches and little to no yard maintenance. Moving further east, we've got the Hunter section. We named that after the, the road, the Hunter Road that goes to San Marcos. It runs parallel to uh, I-35, so it's a good alternate road if you wanted to um, go to San Marcos or maybe just to the, um, the premium outlet malls that are right over there. Our borders of Hunter would be the lower Guadalupe and San Marcos to the east. And so not much else going on in uh, the Hunter area, except some really fine neighborhoods. Well, the Hunter Road itself is a beautiful drive. It's one of those uh, country roads that still has the most magnificent blue bonnet crop every spring. And there are neighborhoods that are being built off to each side of it, hidden away from the highway, because that's important here. They want to maintain the beauty and the scenery that's made this place famous. Whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on, coming. I gotta do this again. Actually, I could drive around here all day. Not only is it beautiful and a joy to drive, but it really does go on forever. North of Hunter Road, the communities feature larger homes on typically large lots. These are master plan communities where buyers can find what they're looking for with a wide range of designs, typically with a sort of Texas ranch flair. Havenwood home prices are typically in the $400,000 to $900,000 range on roughly one and a quarter acres. River Chase has homes built between 1999 and 2020 that range from about $725 to $1.6 million. These homes offer three to seven bedrooms and two to eight bathrooms. Both River Chase and Havenwood landowners will enjoy a host of first class amenities with clubhouses, tennis courts, baseball diamonds and the like. Homes south of Hunter are very reasonably priced, starting in the mid to high 200s. And there's yet more brand new construction like these three to five bedroom homes priced in the low to mid 300s. All right, and then going further north, we've got Canyon Lake. So we were just there yesterday. What, what do you like about Canyon Lake? Well, Canyon Lake is the most beautiful lake I've ever seen, ever. It's clear, it's blue, it's uh, clean, it's the perfect cool temperature, and it's very big. It's maintained by the Army Corps of Engineers. There are public parks going into it from pretty much any boundary. Um, boat ramps are available, public boat ramps. And then of course there's uh, properties available along the lake throughout the entire area. Plenty of marinas and a couple of different uh, yacht clubs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, Canyon Lake, a fun destination for anybody uh, anywhere and wants to come to Texas. We uh, recommend checking out Canyon Lake. We've gone there to kayak, to picnic, to swim. It's anything you want to do, it's the best lake. South of that, uh, we've got the Western Hills with uh, Canyon Lake to the north and Highway 1863 to the south. What do you like about Western Hills? Well, I'm jealous of Western Hills. When you were in New Braunfels, you were literally on the gateway of the hill country, the Texas hill country. Uh, as you head towards the west, you do get into those rolling, beautiful, rustic hills. And there are plenty of neighborhoods now that are developing along Highway 46, going towards Bernie, uh, that are maintaining that beauty and yet giving you a wonderful place to live. Um, so that, that takes you into what is hundreds and hundreds of miles of the Texas Hill Country, but right here next to New Braunfels. Uh, hello? Uh, where's my driving music? Thank you. Like in our Hunter region, living out here would give you the experience of a rural oasis with all the benefits of urban living. In Vintage Oaks, you can build a custom home or buy a newly completed one. Home prices range from about 400K to 2 million. K 
Communities like this in the area typically offer fabulous resort style amenities like basketball courts, fitness centers, private parks, and clubhouses. All right, and then we've called this area south of that Garden Ridge, the small town of Garden Ridge to the east and I-35 to the south. I think what you've got is a wonderful uh, opportunity to live here in this beautiful area of New Braunfels, but commute easily to San Antonio. It's only 15 to 20 miles away. You just hop on 35 and off you go. Uh, they're traditional uh, suburban neighborhoods. Uh, they have local schools available and they allow you that access to the freeway if you are one of those that wants to commute. Um, and then South Walnut, that's gonna be um, our side of the tracks. And then uh, we've got Highway 1044 to the west and the Lower Guadalupe to the east. Uh, this, is, this is where we live. What else do you like about South Walnut. Well, when I moved here, it was the affordable place for me. And now as New Braunfels has become more popular, oh boy, has it turned into an investment for us. Um, I mentioned that it was a gateway to the hill country as you head west. To the east where we live, you have this rolling farmland that was just expansive and empty until there began to be a need for housing. So they're building these beautiful neighborhoods, traditional neighborhoods, local schools, and easy access to both I-35 and heading towards uh, Seguin will put you on I-10 if you have to head to Houston anytime. And then, and then that section of the uh, of the river opens up, uh, and uh, Lake Dunlap is a fine place mm -hmm. with a lot of um, a lot of nice riverfront homes and uh, another opportunity for some boating and jet skis and fishing and what have you. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of uh, the river there is the area we call Clear Springs. Mm -hmm. Well, they are really de developing it because they know that they've got the access to the Guadalupe River very close by, um, but also that quick access to I-10 for those who need to go um, to commute. So it's got some beautiful neighborhoods along the way and it kind of connecting to that end of New Braunfels where it starts to feel like it's part of that community as well. Bro, what happened? Looks like I was saying something important. I think I was talking about how Clear Springs is actually an unincorporated community in Guadalupe County with slightly different boundaries. I guess I could have also been talking about how much of a head start you'd have if you lived here and you traveled to Houston a lot. Or I could have been talking about the Clear Springs restaurant on Highway 46. They're known for their fried catfish and onion rings, but I'm partial to the grilled shrimp brochette wrapped in bacon and stuffed with jalapeno. But enough, this is not a commercial. Onward. Avery Park off the highway dates back to 1998. You'll find homes here from about 160 to 325 with quarter acre lots and four bedrooms. And of course, they have a new section. Medium price for a zero to four year old house in LA Crossing is about 225. And if you want to be one of the first in the neighborhood, well, there's one or two places where that could end. Also in Clear Springs, you may happen upon the tallest drone slayer this amateur videographer has ever seen. <laughs> All right, I may not have any drone footage for the next couple of videos. That's okay, I'll figure something out. Well, thanks for sticking around to the very end. And if you are planning on moving down here or anywhere in the surrounding area, shoot me an email. I'd love to hear about your exciting plans. I plan on doing a little bit of a deep dive into each region in future videos. So stick around for those. Thanks again.